Welcome to Chewing the Cord. Here we are with the camp cavalcade of convivial conversation where we bring you a roundup of things that made us ooh from the world of showbiz, stories that make us titter from the internet. And coming up later in the show, we have the newness of new feature that's newer than the newest new moon. So stay tuned for that. But before we hit that, as the kids say, it's time to introduce the man who considers flirting an acceptable way of chatting with your dad. It's our resident. Well, I'll just leave it there. It's Mike. I, I, I've spoken to your dad, not my dad. You never met my dad. Well, not without the mask on, I haven't. But I've been warming my hands gently to caress the lovely juice from the internet, including a story about a new way of using dating apps. Oh, and I have some hot showbiz news, including a story about a showbiz child who's had enough. Oh. Had enough. Oh. And you can always find us while you are locked in a cupboard for doing, well, shall we say, unmentionables. Just look on social media at The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And if you want to listen to us do this show as a podcast or watch us on YouTube, have a search for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. Go on, do it, do it. You know you want to. And if you've interacted with us on social media, then have a look. You might see your name bobbling across the bottom of the screen right now. This news just in. There was a young man from Kent whose cock was exceedingly bent. So to save himself trouble, he bent it in double and instead of coming, he went. So Mike, you know I've been taking night classes. Uh -huh. Fui contandi de illis que non prosutis super me Andre illere entre un spectaculum, quam pulcra e non habio idea dixi qui iki numa fuacanus. Ooh, you are a cunning linguist. That's not the first time you tried to get your tongue round something foreign. Cupid stunt. I'm not a half naked fat guy with wings. Nope, not with wings. Let's just play. Game of the week. The producer can't be with us today, as he's got himself a job at the local art gallery. He said he enjoys handling old masters, especially blowing the cobwebs off well-hung Warhol, although apparently he shouldn't apply Mr Muscle to the Pollocks or take a wet wipe to the constable. So while he grabs his crayons, let's play a game. This week we're playing Show Us Your Draws. You may not know that Mike is a celebrated artist in his own right, and his male nude with grapes recently went under the hammer at Sotheby's. How's the swelling, Mike? Is it better? It, it, it's, it's, gone, it's gone down quite well. Okay. Well, off you skip to our, our lovely art studio on your giant testicles. <laughs> Mike has to do is draw for me and I guess the subject matter vomited out by our random topic generator. Are you ready Mike? I am indeed. Are you prepared? I am peeping myself. Should we get the first one? And yes please. An action. Action. Ready? Okay. Right. I've got my buzzer ready. Oh good. Okay. Is it lactating? It's not lactating, no. Um. <laughs> oh dear me. What? Is it a t It is a t Yes. <laughs> is this what it's come to? Between well, I was going to say, if it comes to, it comes to about here. <laughs> you know, it's a pearl necklace then. Okay. Let's have another one then, Mike. Okay, so the next one. Let's see. It's a film. Film. Little person. And another little person. Yeah, okay. And then we've got. Oh. Is it the human caterpillar? It's not the human caterpillar, no. 
That's one of my favourites. You were close, but I was that? close. Yeah. Oh! Is it the human centipede? It is the human centipede, yeah. I, I do what movie is the human caterpillar? It's the PG version <laughs> of the human centipede. Right. They turn into a beautiful butterfly at the end and oh, fly away. That's lovely. Yeah. Not just eat <laughs> out of each other. Okay, so then this one's a person. Oh, okay. An actual, real life, honest to goodness human being. Yes, they were. Oh, they were? Uh huh. Is it Cleopatra? It I mean, is Cleopatra. Cleopatra. I don't like that I'm inside <laughs> your mind and thinking of how you think. I don't like it. So this is a song. Okay. Smiley face. It's another penis. Oh no, it's not. Pokey face. It's <laughs> like. <laughs> Poker face! <laughs> it's Lady Gaga, <laughs> poker face, yeah! <laughs> let's let's open the door and let another one out, the cat flap. <laughs> okay! Um. <laughs> what is it, Mike? It's a sport, sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's a sport. Ooh! Oh, 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 oh. Is it jousting? It's jousting. Oh, I'm not happy. I'm scared. <laughs> because I, this is this should not be happening. Why should this not be happening? Because you know, like, because my artistry has no, evolved. No, it's like, you know when you say, like, like, groups of women who work together, they kind of, their menstrual cycles quite often kind of sort of sync up. Are you comparing my beautiful drawings to someone being on the blob? Yeah. Source of life. It's not. <laughs> if you're having that as life source, something's wrong with you. Um, so this one's a, this one's a place. A place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ooh, that could be a volcano. Mm -hmm. Is it Pompeii? It's Pompeii. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I, ha look, I haven't seen these. <laughs> I just think I'm hugely intelligent just today. Let's have another one. Okay, so this is a sport. Who can, a sport? Who can we defend now? Who, who? <laughs> let's, let's see, shall we? Because I'm sure see. I can. From the Paralympics. <laughs> <laughs> is it Quidditch? It's Quidditch. Oh, I can't <laughs> deal with it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> That DNA guzzle this morning's done me a world of good. <laughs> okay, you ready for this one? Mm -hmm. This is a song. Song. Okay. Oh, is it a bum hole? Sort of. Sort of a bum hole. Well, it is a bum hole. Is that a fart? Um, no. Oh, I could draw this a different way. I could do this. Is it something to do with the sun? No. It's this thing here. Is it Rocket to Uranus? No, it's not. It, it's a ring of fire. Oh! Johnny Cash. I fell into the... I did not get fire. that one. No, you didn't. No. Let's have a... Let's... Let, let's... Send the flag up and see what happens when it unfurls. <laughs> Put the flag up and one. see who salutes it. Is that what you're is that, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. the phrase you're looking let's for. Do that, okay, let's then. do another one. So this one is a musical group. A musical group, group of the... Yeah, group of the... Petto. Oh. Is it the pumpkin heads? No, but close. Ooh. Is it the pumpkin seeds? No. Are they even a group? No, that's the lightning seeds and the um, one I'm actually drawing combined. So, it, it, what's this? Pumpkin. And what's this? A mallet. Okay, and what's it about to do? 
Smash. Smashing pumpkins. <laughs> Smashing pumpkins. Oh, I think the the it's worn it, off. It's worn it? off now. It's the DNA's worn, worn off. Yeah. 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 Well, that was a triumph. Soon we have a new item to bring you. Not just any item. It's a supercharged sensual experience dripped with vegan honey and drizzled with the finest sustainably sourced line court, 80% dark chocolate from the Himalayan mountains on a bed of silky marshmallow pillows and served with a hot buttered crumpet in front of a smoke-free log fire. I think you might be overselling it. Before that, it's Lee and the Showbiz News. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we talk to the man who once had a gerbil until he loved it so much. It's Lee with the Showbiz News. I squeezed it and I loved it and I hugged it. Did it eyes pop out? Yeah. Sometimes I still feel it. Sort of like crawling. Let's do some showbiz news. <laughs> Let's. Let's. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow. We've had enough oh, of her, no. haven't we? She's oh, got another badge candle, hasn't she? No. Oh, thank God for that. Well, not only have we had enough of her, yeah. but her daughter has had enough of her. So she has well, many. Yeah, because she lives at home and every time. Mum, will you stop making me smell your well, vagina? Yeah. So Apple Martin, <laughs> which. <laughs> Is a drink. Is a drink. An apple martini. <laughs> um, so apple is her first name. Martin is her surname because she's the daughter of Chris Martin. Martin. So uh -huh. we've got a picture of her of Apple and Gwyneth here, just so you know what they look like. Okay. Okay. And then we've got a picture of Apple with Chris Martin. Because they don't live together. Anymore. They don't. They're unconsciously divorced, con separated, <laughs> something. A conscious or other. uncoupling. <laughs> yeah, that's not kind an of unconscious thing. divorce. <laughs> something like that. Anyway, so so well, she's well, si she she is sixteen now. Sixteen? Can you believe 16? it? No. And she's had enough of her shenanigans. She's had enough of Gwyneth's shen shenanigans. So she's taken to TikTok to post videos, kind of giving him a bit of a roast. Okay. So as um, Gwyneth is going about her daily routine. Mm -hmm. Apple is following her around with a camera filming her and taking the <laughs> out of her. Okay. So it kind of starts with um, her in her bathroom and she's going, so first, my mom drinks her Goop Glow Super Powder and she eats nothing except for dates and almond butter. She will have that um, with a glass of water. And apparently, she has been eating this since the day that Apple was born. Right, okay. okay. So then she follows her through to another room. It's, and she goes, it's 8 a.m. And she's been doing this since 7 a.m. She just prances around the bathroom, putting on her millions of Goop Glow products for her glowing skin. Right. Okay, so she's, she's ramping it up. This is, then it gets better. Mm -hmm. She says, so with it, when she's done a skincare routine, she goes, they go into the to sort of living area where she's on a laptop, mm -hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow's on a laptop, and Apple goes, then she gets to work, making some more vagina eggs and candles, also more vagina candles and vagina perfumes, just everything vagina. <laughs> and yeah, that's my mum's morning routine. So I, I think she's reached maximum vagina candle Saturation. Saturation, yeah. Um, Goop has many different product okay. products, not just vagina candles. Oh, okay. That's good a, to know. It's not good. There's a picture here of some of the other things that, that they produce. So we do have the vagina candle, uh -huh. or I'm not sure if that one smells of their orgasm. I don't uh, know. I said this smells of my vagina. That's one smells of my vagina. Then that little thing below it mm -hmm. is a personal robot. And what does the personal robot do? Personal things. Personal thing? As what in, do you think? As in, it lights your vagina candles. Oh, you say personal things. Is it an intimate robot? I don't, th I don't think so. Why are you looking at me like that's a weird thing to suggest? I don't, I don't a know. A candle smells like a vagina. <laughs> it, well, it could be, but that, the personal, com personal robot is about seven grand. Oh, OK. Um, then bottom corner, we have animal print cigarette skins. OK. Random. Um, and then the other thing is, is a a thing to make a plaster of Paris mould of your peen. Okay. Yeah. Is that to then make it into a deli? No, I think it's just for art's sake. You just 
make, make a nice picture of your nice statue of your peen. Just put it next to a vagina candle. But you, you'd end up making it into a well, you would useful object. But other people, yes, because I, I quite like mine. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm on board with with Apple following a mum round. Yeah, filming, taking the mick out of her because you know. So we are still on celebrity children now. <laughs> Not on them, but we're still talking about celebrity children. Okay. Okay. That's still the topic. Yeah. Okay. Still on that topic. So, Brooklyn Beckham has uh -huh. um, given his girlfriend a unique gift. Is it a pearl necklace? <laughs> well, it's something that she can hang around her neck. Ooh. So what? The, so we've we've got a picture here of Brooklyn Beckham and his girlfriend Nicola looking loved up and happy. Right. No, they're looking smug. Mm, that's it's, not it is a, up yeah, and happy. That's it's, smug. It's a big, so, and he, to be fair to him, he's grown up to a, quite a handsome chap. A handsome chap. He's a handsome chap. He's he's kind of in his like early twenties now. Yeah. I think he's like 22, 23. So she she's called Nicola Peltz. She's twenty six. And what they've done is she's kind of gone onto social media and she's posted a photograph mm -hmm. of this. So they have had with their wisdom teeth gilded and made into necklaces. Okay. Um, that they wear around each other, around each so, so he's wearing hers, mm -hmm. she's wearing his, and they're actually their own teeth. Okay. Underneath the gold is their own teeth. Weird. Yeah, very. Yeah, yeah. And it, they put, kind of posted these like really mushy, kind of like, words cannot describe how much I love you. I'm the luckiest person on the planet. I will love you forever and ever. <laughs> See, what I absolutely love about this internet age that we now live in, is that all of that stuff can come back and haunt them when they get divorced. And it's kind of not the, you know, the teeth mm -hmm. is just the start of a, of a list of things that they've done to kind of memorize each other. So he's had loads and loads of tattoos of different things, including, so, so he's got, he's on his seventh bit of body art. Mm -hmm. And what he's done is, we've got a picture of it here. He's got a tattoo of her eyes on the back of his neck. Is that so she can look at herself when she's pegging him? That's awkward, man. <laughs> <laughs> she might be into that. Just by mirror. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so she, he's got this this tattoo of her eyes, uh -huh. and then underneath is a, a, um, a copy of a letter that she wrote to him. So um, she's got something to read. <sighs> it says something like "defining moments, love of my life, my protection," blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, and he's also had a her grandmother's name tattooed on his elbow. Because nothing says more romantic than, you know. That's your dead granny. <laughs> Abigail or whatever, ta tattooed on your name. Oh, Abigail. No, that's, probably... that's more, that's the hip name, isn't it? That's quite hip, that. It'll be... Hilda. Hildegard. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's odd. Would you, see, the thing with having tattoos and stuff is, they're permanent. You see, what I, I would quite like a tattoo of is the tattoo saying, nothing is permanent. Oh, I see what you did there. Would you would you have the visage of a of a loved one tattooed nope. onto your No. Nope. No. No, nope. just straight no. Just straight no. No. Nope. Not a name. No. Nope. Not a not a no. No. Just because nothing. because people fall out, people they do. Don't would stay you like a part around. of their body removed and and and, <laughs> and turned into something golden that you can put on yourself? On or in? Either or. Because there's a couple of exits, yes. Yeah. Okay, oh. I think we'll move on to that. That's a bit of showbiz news. Mamma Mia 3. Oh my God, why? <laughs> it's coming. So, we've had Mamma Mia 1. Woo! Which was okay as a movie. Good. As a concept, it was slow, but, and Pierce yeah. Brosnan should never sing. Never ever sing. But it was okay. I it could, was okay. It was, yeah. Then we had Mamma Mia 2. Which was just to get Cher out. Yeah, which was, it was okay. Yeah. It wasn't. It was okay. It was an hour and a half and then five minutes of share. It's coming. It is happening. It is in the works, as they say. Oh, joy. So, share. Mm -hmm. Put a picture of share with... Um, Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep. She has said that she only wants to do Mamma Mia 3 if she can do a duet with Meryl Streep. Oddly enough, they play mother and daughter mm -hmm. in the film. There's only like, only like a year or so between them. No, there's not. In real life. No. Yeah, there is. So she's so shares about a million years old. Shares in the seventies. Yeah, Meryl Streep's like Meryl Streep is kind of tall. Is kind of 
get in there to a to, to a seventies. Kind of get in there. Kind of get in there. Kind of get in there. So Abba have kind of said that they're gonna there's gonna be definitely five new songs. This okay. is a picture of Abba now. Okay. Not all in the same room. No, because they don't like each other, do they? No, they do like each other. They do. They do. They just don't, can't get together very often. In... Because they're so busy. Well, you know, it's COVID times and all that kind of stuff. I I would love them uh, to <laughs> be doing the Zoom. 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it's been COVID since the, it's been a while, Lee. I get that. You know, but... they're of a certain age. Anything could get to take them out. So... <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything, anything a heavy cold about. and they're gone. Heavy cold, yeah. a sniper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a rogue bull running down the street. Anything. You've gone. I need, like, Norway or something. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's going to be happening and all the original cast have signed up for it again. So, Julie Walters is going to come out of retirement to do it. Lily James, Julie Colin Firth. Has Julie Walters actually retired? Yeah, she's kind of... Yeah, she's kind of... Or gone. she's just gone... Oh, well, I think she's kind of just all, right? doing the things that she wants to. So yeah, um, so yeah, Mamma Mia three, it is 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 coming. Well, thank you, Lee. Always good to know about the coming of the apocalypse. And coming up soon, we have our new feature. And it's not just any feature; it's a hundred laminated layers of fluffiest all butter puff pastry, piped with heavenly whipped cream from our herd of sustainably farmed, free range, meat free dairy cows laced with an indulgent blend of fine scotch whiskey, artisan gin, and a ripple of crushed raspberries, all served in an edible spun sugar tureen. Again, I think we may be over-egging this particular roulade. Before that, we have Mike in the bus. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time to go over to the man who is the inventor of the over-the-shoulder boulder holder. It's Mike in the buzz. <laughs> um, and also gentleman support devices, also known as my hands. Oh, Ooh. I was going to think you were going to say mouth. Anyway, um, I've been having a bit of a thumb through the internet. I licked my fingers for her. Flipping through. Nice. Like you do with a book. You do? Um, to find some interesting little tidbits. Talking of tidbits, yeah, there is a sex doll that you can have made. Is there? Yes. And who would who would you have made into a sex doll? I'm I'd go for a I'd go for a Jason Statham. Jason Statham? Yeah. What about an ex partner? No. No, maybe a dead partner? <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Well, it's a shame because this um doll company will make a replica of a dead partner into a sex doll for you. That's some messed up right there, isn't it? Why is that messed up? So if you think, a badge, Lizzie too. Yeah. Right. Be a bit lonely now, right around that house on her own. So she could have Philip, a replica of Philip around, so she could still talk to him. Because, you know, they're together for a very long time. Mm -hmm. They could have, have a dog. And also ride him like sea biscuit. Well, that's, a, that's an option. <laughs> Imagine if... Do you think she leaves the jewels on? Yeah, because why yeah. not? Well, I know you would. Yeah, if you've yeah. got them, wear them. Exactly. So yeah, you could have a, a partner made into a sex doll so that, you know, you could have some intimate time. That's weird. Could you it's like... Not, it's no weirder than having a sex doll with somebody else's, like Jason Statham on. <sighs> It's a fine line, Mike. It's a very fine line. Could you? Because can you choose the age of the person that you're having the set? Because you can say, I don't want it when they were like old and knackered. I want like the hot young version <laughs> of them. Please, here's a photograph. You give them a photograph for them to make it into. Okay. Which version you want? Do they? So there's there's not many. Well, I mean, I don't know, but the, uh, I don't think there's many people that have photographs of full naked people of their partners. No, but you can tell them. Yeah. So could you like customize it? So could you say, right, well, this is the the face this when they the were like this is the twenty five. The... Give me nine inches. Yeah, they only do actually lady ones. They only. That's yeah. sexist. Why why only lady ones, Mike? Why? I don't know. You oh. can write to them and ask them. It's called Luxbotics. 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 L U X. Okay. Um, it's weird. It, it's weird and, and not cheap. How much are we talking, Mike? So, um, so we're looking at up to ten thousand US dollars. My goodness. 
Yeah. Could you kind of just say, can I just have the bottom half? They might have had a really awesome vagina. Do you want me to move on? Yes. Okay. So the next story, mm. okay, is about a lady with another interesting body part, because I know you like an interesting body part. Okay. Okay. And this is the woman with the longest nails in the world, has had them cut after 30 years. Dirty, dirty woman. What do you mean dirty? They were clean. <sighs> right. How on earth can she physically live day to day with nails that long? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> how does she wipe her bum? I think. How, she... Mike? How? <laughs> well, now she can. She can now, but how she could can. she before? Because she's had them cut. Maybe she didn't. Uh. Maybe she just had a really high fibre diet. Or perhaps she had somebody that did it for her. Mm -hmm. Or a bidet. A bidet. A bidet. 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 Um, how would you say it? Bidet. 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 Bum washer. Um, <laughs> oh, it was in the backyard, yeah. I just I just don't know how she could, because cause they, they're really, they're like, really they look not. heavy. Mm -hmm. And how would she like get things to her face? How would she scratch? Oh, I think she'd be good at scratching. Yeah, but, <laughs> like that. Did she just eat like kebab type foods? They just put them onto the fingernails and she <laughs> thumbs them off. I have... Corn. She was great at a party with corn. <laughs> I have so many questions. And none of them are answerable. And none of them are answerable. No. But she had them cut after 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. What did she do with them, Mike? Um, she's had them preserved in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Oh, okay. So they're there for, for future generations to see. And go, ugh. Admire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We used to take her four days to get them painted when she had them painted. Just because you can do something doesn't mean say so you should do it. Like? Growing your nails that long. Okay. And it's, it's... Your, it's your body, do what you want with it. Yeah. But don't come in around me with your skanky filth nails. I don't think she did. She never did though. No. She never visited. Never came. She, she never knew called. your feelings. She couldn't call because she couldn't dial <laughs> she with her just... huge nails. She could just use her voice activated assistant. She tried to wave, but it used to break her wrist. <laughs> anyway, moving quickly on. <laughs> Talking about broker risks. Um, now, you're not a fan of the, the, the applications for networking, are you? The, the sensual applications. Networking applications. Yeah, I've never really had to need, I've never really had, you know, I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, but because I've never really had to use them. I was gonna say, if you could blow your own trumpet, you definitely wouldn't well, need to yeah. use them. Do, 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 do. Oh. <laughs> Um, well, one gentleman has, has gone to Grinder to help himself out in a different way than usual. Has he? And that's a, a gentleman um, of a heterosexual variety. Okay. Took to Grinder to find a spare inhaler. Oh. So he's put on Grinder that he's not even gay, he's straight, just desperate for a blue inhaler and he can't get one until Tuesday. I'm ducking dying, Lamo. People are nice here, so worth a shot. So he's taken to Grinder. To ask for an inhaler. To ask, to ask. The, for... Because gay people have lots of inhalers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like, is that kind of code? Is a blue inhaler code for some sort of sexual <laughs> position? Or go thing like, oh, I'm after a blue inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> like a Smurf that gives a really good head. Exactly. Something like that. <laughs> but the thing is, he said that uh, on Grinder that people are nice. <laughs> There's not a lot of nicety that goes on did in he, Did he put a picture of himself? No. Gasping for breath. Gasping for breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'd have got a very different reaction to like a picture of <laughs> <laughs> did, did he get? Did he get help? He did get help. From, 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 gr from, from the grinder? From the grinder. Oh, wow. <laughs> like Nancy the Facebook. <laughs> right, from the grinder. From the grinder? Yeah, he managed to get a, a, get a, a blue inhaler. Oh, he said homosexuals weren't kind. Exactly. I bet you he was attractive. I bet you like, he got any pics before he got the inhaler. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I don't inhale it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you use your mouth. Um, um, and if you have something to show us, oh, and Neil from Newcastle, I'm not sure that's even legal, just give us a tag or DM us. We are at the Could TV on all of the usual social media platforms or services. And that brings us quite nicely to the story of the week. And that is charity shops. Charity uh, shops. Charity shops. Charity shops. Charity Do enunciate, shop. dear. Do enunciate, dear. <laughs> Put your ear in, Aidan. <laughs> Batteries. Right. And that's charity shops. Mm. Okay. I've said to people, there are five things we really want you to stop bringing in. Okay. 
Okay. Can you guess what they are? Knowing you, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be sex toys. Okay. Um, dead relatives. <laughs> dead relatives, okay. Skiddy undies. Skiddy undies. Yeah. And two other things. <laughs> two other things, yeah. um, No. No, none of those. The two other things, yes. Two other got things. The two got other right, things. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so they've asked people to stop bringing single items that are supposed to be a pair, like shoes. Well, that's common sense, isn't yeah. it? Broken electrical items. Yeah, fair enough. Dirty clothes. Not necessarily skiddy undies, but dirty clothes. You know, sweaty pit stains. Yeah. That kind of stuff. That sort of thing. Um, broken toys, like jigsaws with four pieces missing. Mm. That sort of thing. And then things that other people probably wouldn't want to buy. So they've said that, look, if you're going to sell something, you want to bring it to the charity shop, we'll accept it, but make sure that other people might want it. But who's to say who wants what? And that's, that's what got me thinking. Let's have a look at some things from a charity shop and oh. see if, if you would indeed want to buy these things. OK, I'm up okay. for this. So the first one we have is a starfish pillow. I like it. You like it? I particularly like the testicles. <laughs> it's got testicles, yeah. Yeah. I'd buy that. I would sit on it. And the next one, a book on how to poo at work. No. no, I don't poo at work, so that would but this, not be... This, so that means this would be helpful, because it would tell you how to do it. No, I choose not to poo at work. Why? Because I like... The whole pooing at work thing is, it's a minefield. It's not. It, it is, really, because it's like, you know, when do you go? You go when it's not your break, that's <laughs> a tip. Right, you give yourself an extra ten minute break by having a poo. You know, what if it smells? Then it smells and it's, you're not at home, it's fine. What if you pebble dash? Oh. Yeah. See, it's a minefield. It is. If you... I I have something called poo fume, and it's um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a turd dissolved in water that you spray on yourself. <laughs> no, what you do is, you before you sit down, you spray the water, mm -hmm. and it ha it has a layer of of like essential oil. oil yeah. yeah, drop your load, mm -hmm. and it doesn't doesn't make it smell like. Well, basically, it smells like shit with flowers on it. But <laughs> it's better than... it sounded like someone's pooed in a flower bed. <laughs> um, now, the, the last one I saw, I, I, I instantly thought you would buy, I would want. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's pug nipple tassels. Got them now. Got have one you? underneath this. Have you? So you want what these then? Oh my God, <laughs> have you actually bought them? No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, because cherry shops have opened. <laughs> they have indeed, yes. Uh, they would have to have been non-used. I don't want somebody else's nipple juice. They, they, they look unused. Okay. They look new. Yeah, and that's all from The Buzz this week. Well, thanks, Mike. I'm off down the charity shop right after this. Coming up, we have our new feature. It's not just any feature. Don't start that again. <laughs> right, it's coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Lee. If I said Cox to you, what springs to mind? How dare you? And Feynman? Still intact. I, I'm talking Brian Cox and Richard Feynman, the physicist, of course. And how do you feel about copper knickers? You said you'd never mention my foray into chastity devices, and it was steel, not copper. What? What? No, do you know what? Know what? Yes, know what. Do you know what? What? No, James Watt hurts. Not since I put that ointment on it, but again, thanks for mentioning that on television. They were all great scientific minds. I think the producer could have found an easier way for us to introduce our new segment. But never mind, it's time for... That science, that is. Lee, you like standards, don't you? Live by them. So today, in an attempt to inform, entertain and educate, and our ongoing efforts to improve the standard of the show, I'm going to introduce you to another standard, the International Standard Poo. Why do you think we need a standard stool? I don't know, Mike. The answer is so that designers can trace the optimum drop height for toilets. You don't want to splash or follow a poo on its journey into the waste management plant, we don't want our sewers blocking with a turdberg. Nobody likes a turdberg. 
so we thought we'd demonstrate how the industry makes a standard stool, acting, as it were, in the role of the poop police or the doo-doo doctors. Who hurt you, Mike? <laughs> so the first thing we need to know is that the average adult has one poop a day and it is approximately 250 grams in weight. What do you suppose we would need to form the bulk of our example evacuation? I have no idea what, what any of this is about. <laughs> okay, would you like me to explain it a different way for you? Yes, please. We're making poo. Okay. Okay, because in science world, they, they use it to test things. They make crap to test things. Yeah, like toilets. Yeah. Uh, what else? And sewerage. Okay. Because you don't want blockages. No. Or you don't, you don't want turd bugs. Have I had a stroke? Am I like in <laughs> intensive care? Like on a ventilator dreaming this? Is this like a weird hallucination? This is real. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's actual soya bean paste that we use for the, the, the bulk of the, the doing. Um, and you have some there on your desk. So what we need to do is measure out the standard 250 grams and let's shape it into a typical turd. You've got some gloves to protect your digits. I've slipped through some weird time <laughs> space continuum and I'm... You see, my hands are so massive and manly and rugged, masculine. I can't get, I can't get the... Are you ready? Can't get them on, but that's fine. <laughs> it's protection. It's a struggle. Yeah. So what you want, you want some of this brown tub? Is the brown soya bean paste. Why is the brown stuff on the top of that's it? Soya sauce. Do it, is there a thing there? Yeah, is there there's a, a thing there, so it's like margarine. It smells like parking. It smells like parking. Yeah. You know, you know parking? Parking. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. Parking. So when you we pull up at the supermarket. No, parking. Parking the cake. Parking. Uh, uh, bonfire night. Parking. Parking. I don't know what you're saying. This is another wood mouse. I don't know what you're saying. Parking. Not parking. Parking. Anyway, it smells like that. Okay. It smells like soybean paste for everybody at home. Um, so you want 250 grams? With my hands, with my fingers? Yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why you've been supplied gloves. So I've turned, okay. How many? 250 grams. That's a substantial amount of poop. Mine's saying 9.7. Press unit. Oh, I've got 259. I've got nine too many. Do I need to take some off? You need to take, yeah. I'm at 250, there we go. Oh, perfect. There we go. And so now we need to make a poop. That's pretty much what mine looks like, to be fair. Really? Yeah. That's concerning. It's never a solid. <laughs> Is it never a solid? So there we go. I've, I've made so what, what have I got to do now, Mike? Make it into a poo. <sighs> we need to make it into a lovely log. Mine's loose. You've got a very loose stool. Yeah. Your poop isn't just poop. It contains other things as well. So, too much fat in your diet and you get a floater. So let's add some lard. So you've got some lard in the tub there. So we're going to too much fat to make it a floater. Okay, so and have you ever noticed that sweet corn always seems to survive its passage through your passage? Yes. Okay. That is, I know that I know that fact. Okay. Because so the why? human body can't digest sweet corn. And that's because it's made of cellulite, which the body can't digest. Um, so we should add some sweet corn as well. Yeah, add some sweet corn to your poop. The, the, if you ever want to find out mm. how quick your digestive system is, mm -hmm. eat something with sweet corn. If it comes out and you have morning poop, then you've got a, a, a normal running digestive system. Mm -hmm. If it never comes out again. You're probably very constipated. Yeah. So let's add some of the other things you might have accidentally swallowed. So it could have had undigested nuts. So add some nuts in. Some nuts and some fruit here. Yeah. Add fruit as well. You can try add fruit as well. And then we've got grains and things. So add some grains, some seeds. Oh, to be fair, that's looking quite tasty. <laughs> Don't try this at home, people. This is just for science. Don't do this yourselves. But we've got some batteries, um, some Lego. 
Some Legos. You're not telling me that if you sw if you swallowed a battery, it'd come out in your doings. Of course it would. Burn, uh, burn it through your stomach. Burn it through your stomach. The acid. Yeah. And it got some googly eyes too, because googly eyes go in everything. So we mix it all together. Let's make this poop a proper poop. Did you know that the most expensive coffee is called Kopi Luwak and is made from coffee beans plucked from Sibbet's feces? That's right, it's passed through a wild cat. And guess what? We have some here for you to try today. So if you have a look <laughs> in your little, little cup, little cup of, of coffee. Chin chin. You drink, drink up first, Mike. Ooh. Can you taste the difference? Tastes like fag ash. The ideal poop is continuous log and sinks to the bottom of the toilet. The parrotfish eats coral and poop sand. Wow. And poop transplants can be an effective medical treatment. Now I've had a few of those in my time. <laughs> <laughs> and did you know that there are four bags of astronaut poop on the moon, left behind by Neil Armstrong on his Apollo mission to the moon? So of course your daily defecation includes one other ingredient, Lee. So let's add a pinch of glitter to yours. Because you can't polish a poop, but you can roll it in glitter. Oh, just added a bit. I'm just going to add a bit of blue. You've got a bit of blue. That's okay. That's fine. Wait a minute. Our standard Thora herd needs to be 250 grams. And we've added a lot of things. So we need to bring down our daily dump into the perfectly practically perfect poo. So there we go. That's that's mine at 250 grams. I mean, pretty much, yeah. Okay, so reform it into a realistic shape. And do you lay a cable or pinch off a perfect walnut whipley? I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now it's time to test to see if our chocolate logs sink like the Titanic or float like a butterfly. So you should have a bowl of water. I do. Yeah? So we can simulate dropping the kids off at the pool. I'm going to see if mine sinks or floats. Oh, I've got a sinker. Oh, that's good, because it's sunk. Okay, do you want to test your, your lump out? I'm concerned about your radius, if it comes out like that. <laughs> oh, and you've got a lovely poop too. I got a bit of splash back then. It did, because that's because it wasn't a lovely log. It wouldn't go in a log. <laughs> and that's science, that is. That science, that is. Well, that was literally shit. We had one chance to lift this show from the gutter. You forced it further down the toilet. You blocked it, Mike. That's just about the end of the show for this week. But we have just enough time to remind you we are at The Cud TV on social media. The TV for our website. And while you are on the website, have a look at the support section for exclusive clips, including outtakes. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye!